<laughs> uh, it was it was a big one. You know, it was um, a rivalry game. It was good. It was the first one since we've been here. I've been in that stadium a lot and taken a lot of losses over the years. Um, so, you know, it's not real open the space. It's like kind of like it was like rows and you can't really see and. So I was like, screw it, I'm going to climb up on top. And, you know, so it was, I got a good view of uh, coach when he came in and the players. So it was good. You know, we had a, we've had a bunch of games that have come down to the wire against them that have been one store games. <clears throat> and I know that one means a lot to the players too. And it was, it was cool for those, to, for those guys to be able to get that. And, you know, even the guys that weren't here, you know, that's probably the most text messages I've gotten from former players in, in the Coach Fleck era, just guys that have been here and played for us, played for me. They were excited about it. So that, that was for all those guys, too. So. How are you at hitting the curveball, and why was that one controversial? Well, interesting on me on the curveball. At one point, I was really good. I was a good baseball player. Then I got hit in the eye. I'm blind in my left eye. When I came back, I couldn't read the rotation on the spin anymore, and I became a fastball guy and my football days took priority over the baseball days. That being said, you know, reverses, handbacks, double moves, shots, um, those have been things that they've gotten us with over the years. And so we, those are kind of like off-speed pitches. Those are, those are pitches that are designed to get you looking one way and come back the other way. And so we kind of made that a point of emphasis to, to make sure that to, to, to take care of those types of plays. Um, and when you're able to hit a curveball, a lot of times it ends up being a, a, a great a great play in baseball in terms of you get hit, hit a hanging curveball, it's a home run. Um, and so that was kind of like the emphasis. You know, a couple, a couple of the sacks that we had uh, were on double moves um, where I thought our corners did a nice job of reacting to the double move. Now the quarterback can't throw the ball, he's got to hold the ball, and you get a chance for the, for the coverage to get home. I want to say in particular, the, the one at the end, you know, Danny, it was an out and up. There was the, the other one with Devin when he knocked the ball out. That was a double move. So that that was why it was kind of the point of emphasis. They ran the handback play, which is a misdirection play, a scissors play. Um, and that one was Devin Williams coming back and making that play. Um, that same play had gotten out on us uh, the year before, and it was a 20-plus yard run. Now the next play we ran missed and sacked it and knocked him out of field goal range, but I'd prefer not to have to have that happen. So that was why uh, hit the curveball was kind of the deal, and we told him before the game, we gotta, we make a play, let's celebrate with the, with the baseball swing, and JLR decided to, to throw a uh, lacrosse stick in there. <laughs> Uh, which was not elite, but Danny, you could tell, is an athlete. He's played baseball, so his was pretty good. So, what do you think clicked for your linebackers last week in terms of just finding the consistency? Of, you could see a point where it's like little details previously, where it was a middle screen against Iowa. Yeah, like I, I just think time. You know, um, it's just getting coached every day. It's working every day, and then you know, I think you you get the bye week. Uh, bye weeks are always important. They're important for health, but they're also important for, hey, where are we at? We need, what do we need to get better at? What do we need to emphasize? You know, sometimes in a normal week, your, your, your indie and your drills are devoted more to that particular opponent. When you're in a bye week, it's more of like, hey, what are we deficient at and what do we need to get better at? So as a coach, you evaluate that during that week. You watch that, but then you do that with the players. You watch that those types of plays, the film with the players and say, this is what we need to be better at. They come in on their own and they'll watch the cut-ups from all the games, not just one game, but all the games, and they can see where they need to be better. And so you, if you can do that and have a very valuable bye week, a lot of times when you come out of it, um, it's, it's really beneficial for you. You know, I think back to 2020, it wasn't a true bye week. It was a COVID bye week, bye weeks, you know, where we got an opportunity to kind of do that with a defense that was inexperienced as well. And came out of those couple of weeks off and I thought finished the season really strong. Uh, and then that segued into really the last two, two years for that group of guys, that core group of guys. And obviously we got a new group now and they're finding their identity. So I was pleased with the work. I was pleased. I thought the linebackers played their best game uh, individually and collectively. Now they got to do it again. You know, it'll be a different offense, different scheme. Um, just because you do it once doesn't mean it's going to happen again. But I thought they took a, a really good step. I felt in practice their confidence in practice, um, and then it carried over to the game. So, do you feel like that at each level, 
complement each other throughout that game? Yeah, I, I definitely. Uh, I thought with, you know, start with the back end, you know, we had made mention of the, the double moves. They ran four and, and we covered all of them. And, and when you do that, now that gives the other guys time. I thought the rush as the game went on got better and better and better. At the beginning of the game, it was something that I didn't think we had done a great job with. You know, the first drive, you know, I thought we played the first drive well, except for one play. You know, we get out of a rush lane when we retrace. Quarterback gets out of the pocket, throws a jump ball. We're right there, and we don't make a play. Credit to the kid, he makes a good play. And then you hold him to a field goal and come back. And and then, um, you know, I, I, I thought the linebackers played well overall. Jalen Logan Redding, I thought, had a strong game. Kyler, I thought, had Devin Eastern. So I, I thought all those guys up front did a j good job, too. Jalen, I mentioned. Well, I think we recognize that team's way better than their record. Um, they've got a lot of uh, really, really good players. Um, they've got length. They've got athleticism. Um, they've got speed. So I think that's one thing. You know, it's not like the players put on the film and see um, anything other than a really talented team. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, we, we, we we've been a group that's been overall. I would categorize this, and you guys asked me. I don't remember who last week. To describe, I, I said I felt like we were inconsistent. So, like we we have a a positive game. Well, what are we going to do in the next game? Like that's the conversations we have as coaches. Like, are you going to be able to put back to back, or are we going to be come out and feel like oh we've had one good one and now we're going to allow ourselves to slip? So, those are all the internal conversations that you have with your position group, me with the defense, um, and then you get to go out and play. So, I think just the fact that it's a Big Ten opponent, it's a, a really talented team. Um, it's a team that year in, year out is in the top 25 in recruiting rankings. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a big challenge for us. Um, I've been pleased with how we practice this week. You know, they've, they've really come to work, which is good to see. So, so my favorite stat I told PJ on Monday was the uh, 28 carries for 11 yards. Yeah. You don't see that very often. So no. you guys were really dominant, especially against the run. Yeah. So uh, a lot of things to take out of this game. What, what's the next level of, a, of improvement for your guys? What's the next challenge? I think I'll give you another stat that's impressive. The longest run of the game was a QB was it was a QB sneak in a two minute drill. You know, think about that. There was there was twenty seven runs, okay, and the longest one was a QB sneak in a two minute drill when we were playing pass. So I, I think that kind of speaks to the what the D line and what the front seven did against their front. Um, but I think it's just again it's consistency, right? It's you have a performance and then you got to respond with another performance and you're going to have to be better the next week because it always gets more expensive, it always gets more challenging. So, you know, you you have a team last week that was more of a of a two back team that was more of a 12 and 13 personnel, two tight end, three tight end, two full back type sets. Um, this team doesn't run two backs. Uh, they're primarily an 11 personnel team, so it's going to be a little bit more spread. Um, they do run 12 personnel and, and get some two tight end sets, but so it's going to be a different attack. And so one week doesn't guarantee next week. Um, now, the process of last week can help ensure that you have success the next week. And what I mean by that is if you, I thought we had a really good week of preparation on the field and in the film room. If you can do that and do it a little bit better, it gives you a chance. Coach always says that. I believe in it. You know, great week of practice doesn't guarantee anything. They could have a better week of practice. We don't control their practice. We control our practice. But when we have really good practices, it gives us our, our best chance to go out and be successful. So I want to see us do a good job setting edges. I want to see us do a good job tackling in space. And I want to see our underneath zone coverage do a really good job against, you know, their passing game because I think they got some really good receivers. Yeah, I think – obviously building confidence and I agree with you I think the linebackers had their best cumulative game and so that's got to help especially the young guys sure absolutely it again I, I said it last week I think positive action you know helps breed confidence and so when you can go out there and have some success you're like okay well I, number one they like it and and number two it's like it creates more buy-in to to work even harder because hey my work's paying off it's hard for young guys when they don't see the work paying off that's the hard thing for young players because they don't see immediate results. And you keep talking to them about, you know, working, 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 and then they don't see it. And it's like, man, is it ever going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. You know, a guy like Devin Eastern, who I think is playing at a really high level, you know, last year he got on the field and 
he was just okay. He was average. And, you know, even at the beginning of the season, he was okay. He was average. But now he's playing at a really high level. But that's how it happens, you know. And, and you know, sometimes people lose focus on that. And that's our job as coaches to make sure we keep pounding that message. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously they've played four, they've played 12, they've played 10. Um, you know, they, they've had some guys move around. I think 12 is a good player. You know, obviously they, you know, you just look at it chronologically. They had a bye week, they come out of the bye week. You know, he's 12 starts. And, uh, you know, I thought he did some good things in both games. You know, obviously go against Michigan. And, you know, we've been against Michigan. That's a tough, that's a tough out for anyone on offense. Um, so, you know, I, I don't see that as indicative of, of anything other than going against a really, really good defense, one of the top ones in the country. Um, so, yeah, I, but the thing that's been consistent, I think the offense is the offense. It's not like, okay, one quarterback's in and now it's 90% run and it's going to be, you know, Wildcat. It's the, their offense is their offense. Each quarterback has their own strengths and weaknesses. They know that. We know that. Uh, but for the most part, it's been pretty consistent. So um, we'll, we'll prepare for both. And, but I, I think that there's a little bit of a consistency in what they do. So. Yeah, that's 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 a great question. I, I think Matt Kingsbury uh, at linebacker uh, is going to be a really really good player. Um, he's got size, he's got length, he's got intelligence, um, and he 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 works really hard. I, I I think I think he's he's been really impressive. Um, Zaquan, you know, he has everything to be a really good player for us. He can run. He's got great COD. He's tough. He's got a little bit of stoutness to his lower body, which I always like with DBs because it, it, it allows them to be physical. Um, so he's done a really good job. Um, you know, Theo, you know, in, in our Sunday night football with the young D tackles between Martin and, and, and Theo, we don't have uh, much behind them. So they play a lot of the reps. Um, and so they, they're, they're gassed a lot of the time. But I think both of those guys – uh, are going to be, you know, really good carry. Uh, I'll, let me just say this. I like our young defensive players, uh, you know, as I've rattled off six guys already. Like, I, 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 I like our young defensive players. I think they're going to be really good. Now, does that mean next week? No. Does that mean next year? You know, when you get to write your preseason article, are these guys going to be dominant players next year? Probably not because there's this process of growth that people go through uh, and development that people go through. But I – I, I, let me put it this way. Every one of our defensive guys that we brought in, I think I, I've been impressed with and think are going to be a really good player for us. So it's been fun. All right. Thanks, guys. What's the take from Iowa? What were the takeaways of the offense? Uh, execution's got to be better uh, in certain situations. I think at times we made plays when we needed to. You know, the, the shot play, the explosive play down the field, um, the fourth quarter was a huge play. Uh, ran the ball effectively at times. You know, we'd love to be able to finish the game on offense, that final drive, final two drives. Um, you got to have just certain situations. Situational football has got to be a little bit better in that, um, in that current time of the game. Um, you know, the, the, the play of the quarterback, you know, with Ethan, I thought, I thought honestly, like it was one of his most complete games. And the reason why I say that is because the ball was never not going to the right spot. You know, we talked about he put the ball in harm's way twice. One was the obvious one where the ball hit off the D lineman and went in the air. The the second time was you know in the in the last drive of the game on the second down play. And other than that, like I was I was I was very encouraged by the way that he handled the situation, he handled the moment, and he played. You know, we have to continue to clean things up and continue to execute. But, you know, I always go back to the, the that Iowa defense. That Iowa defense is a tough one regardless of whether they're ranked, not ranked, on the road, at home. It doesn't matter. And, you know, I'm encouraged. I do want to execute better. I want to execute better in all phases of the game. But I don't think I'm ever not going to say that. You know, I think I'm always going to say that I want to execute better and execute at a higher level week in and week out and get better daily. That was that was huge. That was Coach Fleck. You know, he 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 did a great job of of handling that whole you know situation. He does an awesome job with that throughout the game. 
you know, he allows me to call the game. You know, he manages the game. And that's one of his strengths, one, um, one of many. And I think, you know, you look back at the Michigan game, he handled that for end of the first half perfectly too. Um, and it ended up working out. Then you you look at that situation at the end of the, the first quarter and it ended up being one of the things that was, you know, helped us win the football game. You know, he would just continue to tell me, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And, and you know, he just allows me to call the next play. And it ended up working out. So Michigan State has obviously had some struggles this year. But mm-hmm. they have a couple linebackers who tackle real good and play well against mm-hmm. the run and got a pretty active secondary. So what concerns you most about the Spartans defense? Very athletic, run to the football. Um, they're, they're good defense. They, they, they present their own sets of challenges just like every other defense. Third down is huge uh, for them. They want to get you into third down. Their third down package is exotic. Um, they play a number of different coverages, a number of different pressures, things along those lines. First and second down, they're you know they just play sound defense. And but you know the thing that that, that I wouldn't say worries me, you know, but it's just it's what they do to play good defense is their third down. They, they do a good job on third down. We need to do an awesome job of eliminating how many third downs we're in and being able to execute uh, under that situation. You finished Sean Tyler and Jordan Newman this weekend. Yep. How do you get Sean going? He's kind of struggled here to, to find his consistent footing. And how would you describe Jordan Newman as a tailback? Uh, Sean, Sean's fine in his way. And, and that's probably, you know, a poor way of saying it. I think he's, he's continued to get better every day. The struggles by him at the beginning of the year are documented, and he's changed. He's changed the way he goes about his business with just carrying the football. We made adjustments after that Eastern Michigan game, and he never he never doubted that. And you know, we did a number of different things in a creative fashion so that he carried the football better. And you should see how he carries the ball in practice. He's done a great job in games. He he's he has to just go play. And I think he's going to be able to be put in a rhythm and he's going to be able to go play. Jordan, I'm excited for Jordan every single time he gets in the game because he is he is a true um, – he embodies the road boat culture. That's what Coach Fleck, you know, wants in every single player. He's a guy that you – know, he earned a scholarship. He plays on special teams. He is a quad teamer. Now – you know, his role continues to expand on offense, and he's still assisting on special teams. He's still playing on special teams. He's always been a, a, a valued member of our team on third on third down. You know, when Bryce, Bryce got hurt, Jordan stepped right in there. And even last week when Jordan was in on third down, I, didn't, I, I wasn't afraid to run the football. You know, it's not like when he's in the game, I'm not going to run the offense. Jordan's going to run the offense. He's done that. He's exceeded everyone's expectations. You know, and he's continued to change his best every single day. You know, uh, I mean, you probably want me to say yes. I, I don't. I, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as we're going to run. We're going to run our offense, and we adjust as the season goes on with. Who's playing well? Who's executing it at a high level? How how can we get those people the ball? I have faith in whoever's back there. I really do, and I believe in in how we develop each position. If a guy has to go in and play, he's going to be able to have that situ- have that that repetition, those repetitions, the preparation all week to be able to put be put in that position to succeed. I have full confidence in Darius all the way down to the last guy in the room, you know, and so. It, I don't think it changes my mentality. You know, I think, I think it may be, it looks at it from, I look at it from the standpoint of I have to get Ethan, you know, involved early, you know, get him into a rhythm, you know, because with that, maybe we, we'll, maybe we want to attack people in the air a little bit more. Maybe I want to run the ball the same. I don't know, you know, but I don't look at it. I don't look at it any differently. I look at it as the guys are in the game. They're here. They're ready to perform. They're going to go perform. Right. Brown's only had a couple catches in the last three. Yep. What has to happen to get him going? Um, Brev, Brev has got to just continue to get better, continue to make the play when the time comes. When the ball's thrown his way, he's got to make the play. He's in position, and I think he knows that. I think we know that. I guess I get asked that question about Brev all the time. It's, I, I fully expect for him to make the play 
when the ball is thrown his way. He dropped the ball on Saturday. He's going to get an opportunity again this week. He has to make the play. I have full confidence that he will make the play. I, I'm, I'm excited that he gets another opportunity. You know, I – I love him. I, I love the way he prepares. I love the way he, he works. I just want I want it for him, for anybody other than that. It's not about me. It's not about anybody else. It's about Brevin, and I want Brevin to make the play. You've watched two months of Sunday Night Football now. Who are some of the young guys on offense? You referred to it as Sunday Night Football. I was, I was, I was thinking. Um, you know, TJ, TJ uh, McWilliams has done a great job. Um, Nuke, young wide out as well. They both have have really shown that they can they can help us in the future. Um, Philip Daniels at, at tackle, you know he he's really shined. I'm, I'm excited about our young guys, even even some of the younger guys that are just in the two deep at the old line. You know we we Coach Callahan puts them in there in those situations, and and they do they do a really nice job. And I think it's hard it's hard right now because. You know, I say this uh, all the time. Coach Flex says it all the time is we want the result right now. But I keep looking at us from a developmental standpoint, and I see that youth. Um, even Darius, you know, I know he's he's going through things in the past, you know, with injuries and things like that. But I still look at him from from the standpoint of like, man, he gets better every day too. And it's it's that youth, it's the development of those guys. Kenrick is another guy too, but he's up with us most of the time. You know, and he's he's really shown that, you know, as a true freshman, he's just continued to grow every day. And I'm excited about our youth, excited about our young old line. And Pierce Walsh is another one. I could I could say a number of guys. But those guys are continuing to work. Coach Rossi has awesome things to say about them on the scout team. They give everything they have. They make our defense better. You know, the people forget that our defense played outstanding last week. A lot of that might have been, you know, too, they played great on Saturday, but they were prepared all throughout the week by the scout team putting those looks out there, helping those guys. And those are those guys that are continuing to develop and that Coach Rossi speaks so highly of. Can I ask one or two more for Coach? What's going to be your lasting memory of, of Iowa City on Saturday? Honestly, um, I was very happy for Coach Fleck. Um, he it, it had been a long time coming. You know, 2013 was the first time I think he played him. Um, and that was a totally different team at Western Michigan than what we have now. And just to see the look on his face after we won, I think that was really cool for him. You know, Coach Simon, Coach Callahan, you know, those guys have been here the whole time. And I told them that after the game, I really wanted to win just for really those three. Like, honestly, like, I, like the, they've been through so much. Um, Coach Collins on defense, like those guys that have been here the entire time. Coach Rossi, too. Like, it's just, it's a struggle. And when you don't have success against a team that you want to beat so bad, it can be, it can be mentally taxing. And then the players, obviously, um, Chris Altman Bell, you know him coming back, and you know the the season he's had is not what he wanted it to be personally, but he's always been there for his teammates, and just him to be. I, I, him and Brett spoke to the offense last week, and you know, and Nathan Bo, all three of them really took a huge hand in on talking to the offense every day, and just to see those guys win that game, you know, and Brevin coming back. Brevin having the struggles they had, but like at that moment when we beat Iowa, like all that stuff went away. And you know, to see Tyler Newbin holding that pig, it was it was something I'll never forget. And it was up there with the same moment of when we beat Wisconsin. And I think that's the that's the challenge now. You have that moment and you have uh that experience and you never want to let that thing go. That's why I think Iowa cherished it so much too. That's why it was so it was so meaningful to them in that game too, because they didn't want to let it let us have it back. And you know, so we took we took advantage of the opportunities. It was an outstanding game. They're a great defense, great team, and it was it was fun to be able to go into Kinnick and win. You know, under those situations, it's a hostile environment, but it was it was very fun to see those people you know experience that joy and success there. Never impressed. I'm never. I'm never surprised by Daniel. Uh, I, I, I. He's extremely detailed in his in his work. How he goes about his business. Wasn't surprised. It was cool to see just because of how how hard he works. You know, there's certain routes in that game plan where he had to know based off of what the secondary was doing, what his reaction was going to be, and and we pause the film at certain times when you see his eyes go to where it needs to be, and it's 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 cool to see when he takes the coaching from Coach Simon. And it goes and shows up in the game, and then you have the success. 
And it's a great testament to every young player in the program that you can go do that. And, and those corners were both good. Cooper's obviously a very good corner, and he's going to have a lot of success in the NFL. And, and, and Daniel went head to head with him. He went head to head with, with the other guy. And I like Daniel's outstanding, great teammate, great person. You know, and I, I'm very excited to see what he can do and continue to get better over these next five games. Hey, did you have a yeah. Uh, you talked specifically about players talking to the team. Yeah. Week. Yeah. Obviously, coming from a rivalry game to a yeah. game against a team that's lost five in a row. Yeah. The letdown factor that could be at play in that. What are you doing specifically regarding your team? One game season, period. And I think it, we, we, we looked at that game last week as – you know, obviously it was a rivalry game. It was one of those things where you didn't want to make that game bigger than it had to be because once you win that game, the next game is just as big. And you don't want to let you don't want to let the joy and the success you have from Iowa affect you against Michigan State. And we flushed that on Sunday. And we turned our attention right to Michigan State on Sunday night, went out, um, had practice and then went and then Monday they had their off day and they were working on Michigan State. And all, Tuesday and Wednesday have been outstanding on the field. The guys are the guys. Get, the guys know that the, at the end of the year they can reflect on the pig. They they can't reflect on it right now. They have to reflect on it at the end of the season. We have five games. We have a game this weekend, and that's the only thing that matters. One game championship season against Michigan State. All right, thanks, coach. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.